Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a watercolor portrait in my Stratmore mixed media sketchbook. So I'm super excited to paint in it again. I've only used it once so far, so it's going to be very exciting. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I post art videos. I try posting every week on Fridays, but you know, sometimes life happens. But if you want to follow me in my art journey, uh, please consider subscribing. I'll be super happy to have you with me. And with that said, we can start with the painting right away. Today, we move on to my mixed media sketchbook. I was waiting for this moment for so long and here we are. <laughs> Thank you if you watched my last video, the sketchbook tour. I got a lot of nice comments and I guess I didn't realize how much I improved in this time span. If I think about it, it's not that surprising as I started in 2013 and just recently finished it. But thank you again if you watched it. I managed to film and edit it super quickly after losing all my video files. If you watched my last video until the end, you know. <laughs> so today is the second painting of this sketchbook. The first one was that time when I tried my Himi Mia gouache for the first time. For this one, I decided to go back to watercolor. I used my Komoribi Japanese watercolor palette. I had been using my Van Gogh watercolor for quite some time, so it was fun to get back to the first watercolors I ever got. For this painting, I wanted simplicity. I wanted to practice doing a looser watercolor, and I didn't want to focus on mixing colors. This palette was perfect for that because it contains a big selection of colors, so you don't have to mix too much if you don't want to. I was inspired by Arlisha's watercolor portraits. She's at Arlie Bean on YouTube. If you don't know her, go check her out. She's super talented and her voice is so soothing. <laughs> anyway, I really like how she's able to paint very loosely. She paints a lot of portraits with watercolor and she paints them in a way that suggests features instead of painting them in an obvious manner. Her eyes are the best example for this. She doesn't care if the paint spreads around, if the iris color bleeds into the white of the eyes. It adds a very interesting level of abstraction in her portraits. In the end, you know these are eyes, but they convey a very particular emotion that wouldn't be possible if she had painted them like I usually do. Another thing I like about her paintings is that she uses a lot of unrealistic colors for her portraits. A lot of artists do this and I've always liked the result. I try doing it from time to time, but I feel like I have trouble letting go of realism. After a while, I try to fix stuff, make everything perfect, put colors where I feel like they would be on a real person, and I just forget to go on with my original goal to be looser and use unrealistic colors. So this time, I decided I would try again. <laughs> Who cares if it's not a success? I really tried being looser in my painting. For example, Usually I would wait for each layer to dry completely before painting the next one. This time, for the first layers at least, I didn't wait as much and I let the paint spread around and mix together. I hoped I would get some nice blooming effects, which happens sometimes with watercolors. I used green for the shadows on the face. I was so proud of this color choice. I sometimes get scared of using bold and unconventional colors in my portraits, but often I find that watercolor dries a bit lighter when I use a lot of water, so the result is less intense when it's dried. And also, I always love when artists use greens or blues for their shadows. It's so nice, and I really love a cool shadow, and I never seem to be able to do it myself. So this time when I did it, I just assumed it and I went for it and I'm really happy with the result.
for this painting, even if I tried painting looser, I found myself reverting back into my old ways a little bit. For example, I waited for the skin layers to dry completely before working on the hair so that the hair color wouldn't spread to the face. Maybe if I let it spread, I would have gotten some nice abstract effects? So that's a good example of what I was saying before. Even if I start with a clear goal in mind, I often find myself straying away from it without even realizing it. I feel like I was able to do looser brush strokes, which suggests texture without having to paint each hair strand one at a time. This was one of my goals, so I'm happy with that. Oh, and by the way, if you hear a weird background noise, it's my computer fan. I don't know what's going on, but it's been acting up while I was recording this voiceover. And I will try my best in post to remove the fan noise, but if you still hear a little bit of it, well, know that I did my best. <laughs> One thing that I had to keep in mind during this painting is that the paper was warping and buckling a little. Since I was painting in a sketchbook, the paper didn't lie flat on the table like a regular watercolor paper would. So I tried to flatten the page with my hand, but it wasn't perfect, so water and paint would pull in some spots. I guess it added an unpredictable element, which goes well with watercolor in general. Overall, I'm very happy with how this painting turned out. It's not as loose as I originally wanted it to be, but it's still a step in the right direction. I'm looking forward to practice with this aesthetic again. I especially liked what I did with his eyes. You'll see that they are painted a lot looser than what I usually do, so that's a win for me. You'll see that more towards the end though. Patience. So I guess I forgot to tell you about it, but at this point, I think you can assume <laughs> this portrait was part of the 100 head challenge. Are we done with it? Obviously not. <laughs> I think this one is portrait 82 out of 100. And to be honest, right now I'm, I need to work on some more portraits because I don't have anything else to post. <laughs> um, when I lost all my footage last week, I kind of lost all my other paintings that I was keeping as a backup just in case I didn't have anything to post. And we pretty much have arrived at this point right now <laughs> because I did edit all my footage. So I'm going to have to work extra hard next week <laughs> to produce a video. Um, well, first of all, to paint something, produce a video and post it all in a week because I've really been enjoying posting every week and I know that this is a pressure that I put on myself. Nobody expects me to do this. Nobody asked for this, but I really like doing it. And now I kind of feel this pressure to post, not this pressure, more a goal that I'm setting for myself. I really want to post every week. But I have to say that these past few weeks have been very busy. <laughs> I don't think I've been as busy as that in my whole life pretty much. And this is not something I want to glorify. I do not believe in, I do not believe in this kind of capitalistic glorification based on working all the time and having no time for anything else and anybody else. I do not believe in this and this is not what I strive to be, but this is a little bit my life right now. I've managed to have a better schedule for June that would allow me for more time to film and do creative stuff on the side, so I can't wait for that. But for now, I think the next two weeks are going to be a little bit intense and I will do my best to post and 
Um, if you have any ideas, yes, that's what I wanted to ask. If you have any ideas of some content you would like me to do, um, I would gladly take them because I feel like I've been doing pretty much the same kind of videos since the beginning of my channel and I really like doing these. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just wondering if maybe you'd like to see something different. I thought maybe I could do like a Q&A because now we are 200 people on this channel. Yay! <laughs> and maybe it's time that I introduce myself. I don't know. What do you think? Or would you like something different? I know that vlogs are super popular right now, especially studio vlogs. But since it's just like something I do on the side, I don't feel like a vlog would be very satisfactory for you because I spend a lot of time working on photography on the computer or I leave to go shoot and I can't really bring my camera because I really have to focus on the work I'm doing. So I feel like most of the time I wouldn't really have anything to show you. If I get more free time at some point, I would love to do vlogs for sure, but I don't think that for now it's super interesting. So if there's anything else that you would like to see me do, maybe other challenges or different subjects or other mediums or I don't know, anything, please tell me because I'm looking for some suggest suggestions. Suggestions. It's so hard to say. Suggestions. Does everybody have problems saying suggest su <laughs> suggestions? In French, it's suggestion. It's so much easier to say. Oh well, moving on. So for now, I'm going to leave you with the music for the rest of the painting. I hope you enjoyed this one. I surely did. It was so much fun to do. And I know I say that every time, but I truly have so much fun doing this. If you like this painting, don't forget to leave a like below, a comment, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Every little thing helps with my channel. And oh, I wanted to say that we recently reached 200 subscribers. So thank you so much if you're one of them. It means so much to me and I'm so happy when I saw the number. Oh my God, <laughs> I, I was so happy. So thank you if you subscribed, if you follow me on my art journey. And I can't wait to share with you again. So until next time. Take care and I'll see you soon.